What's up YouTube? This is another episode of East Coast Power Cichlids coming in here with another video. This video is going to be the long awaited, for me at least, isopod unboxing. I finally got my isopods. They were in the mail for longer than they should have been. Uh, so I, honestly, I just can't wait. I'm just going to pop right into these. I ordered six different varieties, or six individual species at that. So I'm just going to pop into them and make sure they're all right because they they were in they were in the mail a little bit longer than they should have and by the feeling of this box it does not feel like um, it's insulated but I don't know I could be wrong it might be but I feel like all the isopods that I ordered wouldn't fit in this if it was insulated so let's uh, figure out a way I can open this without cutting myself here. Uh, I'm, I'm mad. I've never ordered isopods before, so I'm a little nervous. I don't know how well they do if the weather's a little chilly. Um, ooh, this piece is going to be hard to cut. Oh, there it is. Okay, well, it looks like we do have a little bit of insulation in there. Not much, though. Get that piece of styrofoam off. Okay. Okay, they came in smaller deli cups than I thought they would have. Okay, these ones are alive. Okay, so I'm going to do close-ups of each species later in the video, but I'm going to try and give you just a quick look at some of them. So this one right here is Cuberus marina, aka the little sea isopod. Um, I got these because they're in the same family as uh, the very expensive rubber duckies. And I figured it'd be better to get a cheaper species in that genus and just practice and get comfortable with the genus before I decide to jump into something like rubber duckies. Because rubber duckies cost a just a disgusting amount of money. Oh wow, these are a lot smaller than I thought they'd be. These are uh, Perselionoides prunosus powder oranges. Uh, let me see if I can find where they're all at. I ordered 20, I ordered 10 of the Cabarrus Marina because that was all that was available. And then I got 20 of these powder oranges. I'm sitting here realizing these are a lot smaller than I thought they'd be. And I feel like I should have uh, set up some smaller enclosures for them to breed out before they, uh, um, you know, before they go into their larger ones. Okay, these ones I'm not really going to be able to show you right now. Oh wow, those are little. These are, you can see like that little orangish dark speck moving on the side. These are Isopoda SP Costa Rican purples. Unidentified, not unidentified, but uh, undescribed species uh, of dwarf isopod. These things are itsy bitsy, my goodness. I knew they were going to be little. I didn't know they were going to be that little. And then I got one other dwarf species here, which is a slightly larger dwarf species, but not by much. The dwarf white isopod. Uh, I don't really remember their scientific name, so I'm not even going to try. And then the last two species that I got are okay these guys are a little bit better size so I, I can put I can definitely work with these in a larger container these are Perselio scaber orange dalmatians oh he fell on his back so again I'm gonna give everybody like a uh, a close-up of, of these whenever I Just make sure there's nothing else in there. Don't want to leave any stragglers. Okay. Then we have 20 Perselio. Hold on. What is that? Diliatus. Or Diliatus, however you want to pronounce it. I think it's Diliatus. A.K.A. the Canyon Giant Isopod. The largest species of isopod that can be found in North America. Uh, they get about an inch. And... Let me actually pop this open and take a little 
closer look at these guys. They're all, other than the dwarf species, they, these were all shipped in um, sphagnum moths. So here's one of the canyon giants. I wish it would focus. Let's see if I can get it to focus. No, it's not going to focus. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, start giving you guys some uh, close-ups of all the isopods. And here's the first species that I'll be showing off here, the canyon giant or the Percelio dilatus or diliatus. <laughs> it's probably going to take me a while to get that name down. Uh, I didn't even have to use the microscope for this one because it is just so large. I believe this is the largest individual out of uh, all of them that I got. I ordered 20 of these ones, so I had a decent sized starter colony. I like to just go ahead and start off with a very large colony rather than buying 10 and building my own colony. Uh oh, we got a little escapee there. Better close that up so nobody escapes. So let's go ahead and move on to the next species. We have plenty of little cups to go through. And next up here to show off, this is a species in the same genus as the last one I just showed you. But this one is Percelio scaber orange Dalmatian. You can see where it gets that name. It's got all those orange spots all over it. Really trying to keep these guys from jumping off because while well, I was trying to film one of the uh, Canyon Giants almost jumped off, so he's just gonna chill right there next to my little shark ornament, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, these guys are a little bit smaller than I thought they were gonna be. I'm pretty sure these are full grown too. I have a wild scaber that I collected locally, uh, and he's about this size, and I wasn't sure if he was a juvenile or not. And I'm not sure if these are juveniles or not, or if they're gonna get a little bit bigger, but yeah, these guys are pretty cool. I like these. And then right here we have our Percelio 90s uh, Prunosis powder orange. I had to put this guy in a little petri dish because I did not realize how friggin fast these little guys were. I put him on my table for the for the shot and he just zoomed off. So that's what they look like up close. That's pretty cool. Very long antenna. So yeah, pretty cool little species. Uh, this is definitely one of the species that uh, sort of originally got me started with isopods. They were one of the first ones I found out about. These guys are pretty neat, and I definitely uh, am excited to see how these guys explode in numbers in the future, because I know they are very prolific. All right, and now right here, we've got our little Cuberis marina, aka the little sea isopod. I never noticed this, but they actually have a little bit of, what well, looks like some sort of texturing on them. These guys are really cute. They look like they have a little face. And the rubber duckies actually look like they have a little duck bill, which is why they go by the name rubber ducky. <laughs> but yeah, these are going to be an exciting little species to work with. I ordered 10 of these, but it looks like there might be a few more than 10. So that's pretty neat. I like this little guy. I wasn't sure how much I was really going to be interested in these since they're pretty basic and, and common. And I'm not typically into super basic and common stuff even though all of the ones I ordered today are pretty basic and common species but uh, yeah I think these guys are pretty neat not bad all right and now right here you can see some of my little uh, dwarf white isopods let me just scan over the dirt and see if I can find some there's there's a little guy right there uh, this is a parthenogenic species which means all of these are technically female and they reproduce without the need to actually have their eggs fertilized so they kind of just all reproduce by themselves i ordered 20 of these and by the looks of it he just kind of scooped out a big old pile of dirt and just dumped it in here so i can't imagine these are actually counted out but there's gotta be at least 20 probably more in this thing so not bad <laughs> so these guys are mostly going to be uh, for setting up bioactive setups and as feeders for other animals, but these are still a pretty neat species in the aspect that they are parthenogenic. Oh, there's a big one right there. I'm trying to put the microscope on and look at him. Is that the same one? Yeah, he's pretty big. Wow. She, excuse me, she's pretty big. Because all of them, like I said, are female. Let's get into our last species here. Now our last species to show off here, which is the Isopoda SP Costa Rican Purple. I'm actually genuinely surprised I can actually get this little thing on film. These things are 
absurdly little. I knew they were smaller than the dwarf whites, and I have seen dwarf whites in person in the past, but I didn't realize they were going to be this freaking little. These guys are tiny, and I, I love these little guys. They're I ordered uh, 40 of these, and again, it's the same deal as the dwarf whites, just kind of a random big scoop, so whether or not there's really much of a difference in numbers compared to these and compared to the dwarf whites that I got, there's no telling, but as you can see, put my pinky next to it, you can see how tiny these are, and I'm not a big person, so my pinky isn't very big, so these guys are try and get that to focus a little bit from afar but yeah these guys are pretty neat so I guess let's go ahead and get into putting these guys in their new little bins I'm actually gonna have to set up some deli cups for these Costa Rican purples because I didn't realize they were gonna be so small so yeah let's go ahead and get into that all right guys so that concludes this episode of my isopod series unboxing my isopods from captiveisopoda.com if you want to go check them out maybe buy some isopods see what all they have to offer Go ahead and check down in the link below. I'll leave a link to their website down there that you can click and see what all they have in stock. They do have a lot of stuff out of stock right now. They sell out really, really quick whenever they do get isopods in. So that's how you know their quality. So with that said, tune into my next episode and I'll be showing the, uh, showing the isopods up close or uh, showing them in their... Um, enclosures and being put in there and that whatever so yeah just stay tuned for all that stuff and uh continue to see how i do with my little isopod project so with that said comment rate subscribe respect the hobby respect the hobbies and most importantly respect the isopod again peace out